welcome to EC Confessions Holiday Edition. Got my hot cup of cocoa here, hot chocolate, and a cozy blanket here. Confession number one, I'm not wearing a festive shirt. My sweater's kind of festive, and I do have holiday earrings on, little wreath. So come join me, and I'm going to tell you all about um, how I feel about the holidays as an early childhood educator and working with young children. The next confession I'm going to make to you is really serious. My candy cane still has the plastic on it. Today I want to tell you why I am the Grinch at holidays and this might surprise you if you just watched my holiday video. I'm, okay, obviously I'm not a Grinch, but there are some things that I'm a little bit untraditional about and I think it's for good reason. At Christmas time, you know, we're always doing holiday crafts. Actually, I shouldn't say Christmas, it's all times of year. Let's talk about all the other religious holidays, but also cultural ones like um, Valentine's Day, you know, probably even St. Patrick's Day and Canada Day and Thanksgiving and I'm forgetting what other holidays there are. Mother's Day, Father's Day, all that kind of stuff. So let's just think about what do you, what do you guess that a childcare provider would do at those holidays? Well, yeah, I don't do them. And it's not because I'm lazy. Crafts, let's talk about crafts. Um, yeah, I don't do them because crafts are created by teachers. They, you look on Pinterest, you find a really cute idea and you end up really doing them yourself. It's not the children that are doing it. Um, I think when it comes to like making memorabilia in terms of a child's handprint or footprint, that can be a little bit different. But again, are you altering this creation to look like something because you think it's sweet or cute? Or is it authentically, you know, reflective of the child and their own idea of what art and beauty is? Or is it a representation of like, with their handprint, like a piece of them? Think about what those crafting experiences are like. Are they enjoyable for you or for the children? Um, are the children learning anything in these experiences? Oh, maybe they're learning how to share, but are they really learning how to share or are they just kind of being, you know, told how to use the materials? Um, so let's think about, I would challenge you to think about alternative ways to do art around the holidays. I'm going to give you an example. So maybe the children are celebrating Christmas and they put up a Christmas tree in their house and they come to childcare and they're talking about it. Or maybe as parents at home, you just put up your Christmas tree and you're talking about your Christmas tree. Um, could you you know, ask the children some questions and maybe stemming out of that, they then want to create their own Christmas tree. What materials could you put out for them? They could kind of decide and help you do that. Maybe green paper, maybe sparkles, maybe some like ribbon or yarn. Maybe you could get materials that you would actually put on your Christmas tree, like little mini ornaments or like gift wrapper bows. Maybe if it's with your own kids, you could go to the store together and pick things out. Let them just go to town with the materials. Maybe they end up creating a Christmas tree and maybe they don't and that's okay and we need to be okay with that as adults because you know, the children are okay with that. So another thing that I don't do at Christmas is I do not make children get make like gifts for their parents. Um, yeah. If a child wants to give a gift to their parent, they will say, hey, I want to give a gift to my parent. And they will then ask for the materials they need to do that. And, you know, maybe that happens after these birthday parties or these um, holiday gift giving. That could, same with like, if you think about Halloween dressing up, like children probably do not want to dress up, young children probably do not want to dress up when they're, you know, for Halloween. But maybe after they go trick or treating with their older siblings, then the weeks following, they really want to dress up all the time, right? Like, think about it in that way. What are the children telling me they're interested in and we're like curious about? And if they're not, why would we force them to do things that they don't want to do? Um, I mean, obviously sometimes in life there's boundaries, but when it comes to crafting and play, there shouldn't really be. So what I do instead of getting the children to make crafts for their or gifts for their parents at, you know, maybe it's Mother's Day or maybe it's Valentine's Day, um, instead I, for 
the holidays that feel really special for me and I express that to the families, you know, what, what I celebrate and what's exciting for me, um, I give a gift that I want to give and it's from me, their educator, to the child slash parents and it's not um, something that I'm making a child do. It's usually super simple, like I made cinnamon buns one year and gave each family half a dozen and this year I'm thinking about something else that's really simple but I'm, but I'm not going to say it because they might be listening. I love to bake so often it's just a baked good or something I've crafted myself. I feel like that's so much more meaningful. What else do I not do at the holidays? I do not try to overwhelm children with all the excitement and the little traditions that go along with um, the holidays. So at Christmas time, you know, first of all, the children typically are going to be off for one or two weeks away from me and um, that in itself is going to be huge for, you know, the children and families. Like it's a totally different rhythm and um, the transition out of that and then back into that again is very overwhelming sometimes. So um, I don't fester on that and I, I'm not making them do a holiday pageant or um, take a photo even sometimes. Sometimes we try but I really try not to force children into doing those kinds of things and um, they can be very traumatic for kids sometimes and overwhelming. Uh, lots of loud music all the time, decorating the tree or going to see Santa or all of these things, you know, I feel like that's some, those are the little traditions that the families get to choose how they want to do it. Um, so children are always so stimulated at home enough around the holidays this time of year. You know, that's wonderful, that's great. You know, they're going to see the Santa Claus parade and they're um, going to all these families' homes and um, eating lots of food and different kinds of food and probably a lot more sugar than usual and the gift giving and maybe some families choose to do experiences with the children that are different and special and that's great um, but then I feel like childcare gets to be a space of calm you know I always try to make a consistent environment for them. of course we do special kind of celebrations with the children we have dance parties all the time sometimes it is loud um, we'll make cookies or um, you know actually one year we did decorate a Christmas tree and that's okay but when we walk in the classroom, I try to keep it just the same environment it's always been. Um, so I don't go crazy with holiday decor and I don't make it the focus of our day. Yeah, it's a special thing that comes up and hey, we have pajama day, like how fun is that? But super underwhelming to have pajama day, right? We're not, um, it's nothing new to wear pajamas. And if anything, it makes the morning maybe an easier transition for some families. Um, well, you know, I have met some kids who are very confused about the idea of like, but we have to get dressed in the morning. We don't go out in our pajamas. Like, what is this? And that's okay too. And it's not a big deal if they don't participate then. Like, it's really, it's so minor. So I think it's important to just not overstimulate children because, you know, then it creates, um, you know, they need to express how overwhelmed they are. And the ways children tend to do that overwhelms us. And then we react and it's just not a healthy, happy environment. So if we want the holidays to be special, I really try to focus on being healthy and happy and having special little moments and not, um, you know, creating like an event out of it. Okay, let's talk about the parent side of things. Um, you do not have to get your ECE a gift or your child care provider or your teacher a gift. You don't, you do not have to do that. Um, we don't expect it and, but a lot of people love to do that so, you know, we always graciously try to receive it. Um, for me, I guess I can only really speak for myself on this, is we, I love to get um, little handmade cards from children. Um, if they, maybe they're words that they want to say, or maybe it's the words the parents want to say, but if it has, um, you know, some artwork from the child, don't get us a gift unless that feels right for you or like something you really want to do. Um, I just encourage you to just give gratitude to your child care providers and let them know how much saying it is more than enough and you know the holidays are always so overwhelming anyway there's so many things to check off your list list a teacher gift does not have to be one of them just don't put it on the list okay here's another confession i need more education around um the holidays and traditions throughout the year so i need a good resource for that let me know if you have one 
Okay, last confession. Oops. Even though, you know, we love good break in our work life, um, it's also super overwhelming for us teachers to start back up again after children have been off with new routines and new experiences. So let's all agree to just whether we have kids or we are a teacher with no children, it doesn't matter. Let's just agree to come back in January calm. Let's just be calm together with low expectation. Let's just, you know, take it easy, get back into things slowly. Okay, thanks for joining me. We'll see you guys again. I'm tired.